Welcome back artists. I'm going to do a, a video this time uh, uh, showing you how I'm going to do a painting for it that I was commissioned to do by my friend Matt. This is a picture of him on his uh, horse uh, Caliber. So here's Matt and here's Caliber and Caliber is a big beautiful about 16 hands high. Um, one hand is four inches. A uh, big tall Palomino that is a cross between a Tennessee Walker and a Thoroughbred. Big beautiful horse and I use this photo reference. Now one of the things I would advocate is if you're going to do something similar like I've done here where you use a photograph for a reference is consider paint or printing it off just in black and white. Colors are fine but it's more important that you get your values done correctly. So in this instance you know understand where the lights and black or lights and darks are. Now, as uh, I am left-handed, my strong side is my left side. Number one rule is where's my light source? And once I know that, then that helps me know my shadow side because they're on the opposite side. Uh, as you can see here, the photograph tells you where it is by virtue of where the direction of the cast shadow. So it's cast down to the right here, but not a whole lot. It's mostly off to the right, but the sun would be off up here in this photograph. Which for me in left hander is very nice because that makes it on my strong side, uh, you know. And 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 as you've heard me say before in other videos, uh, unless you put the source of light in the painting itself, by default, if you're a left hander, it would be off the page at ten o'clock, and if you're a right hander, it would be off the page at two o'clock. This photograph is all set up for a left hander just like me. So using that as a reference so that I get scale and proportionality done correctly, and since this is somewhat portrait-like, I now have a good idea of what mat and caliber look and how they're proportioned and saddles and blankets and that sort of thing. The most important part is um, caliber has the right front leg, has the largest bit of white on it. The rest of these, just a little bit of white down low on the on the leg, but this part is white. And then white here, big white blaze pinkish nose. Other than that, it's a very uniform cream-colored Palomino. Matt's got his sort of Australian-looking um, straw hat, uh, green shirt, and sort of a bluish-gray uh, trousers on him. And that's pretty much it. And I like this photograph. This has lots of good motion to it. It's set up just perfectly. The horse's legs are just about right. There's nice flowing motion in the mane and tail. And it's got nice, nice movement and action to it. So I really like the way this photograph is already set up. I really don't need to do much editing. So the first thing I did was do my preliminary sketch. I'm going to set this off screen here. Um, refer to it as necessary. And I went through and did a pretty darn detailed sketch initially. So I get the, the proportions again laid out. Uh, try to get the face done as close as I can. Um, nice simple lines, get them sitting properly in the saddle, on the back, the relative heights as well, leg motions properly done, and then sort of my cast shadows. Now I'm going to simplify the background uh, instead of just this foliage and um, all of this in the background. I'm going to keep it simple. So much of watercolor is light and dark, contrast. I'm going to put some dark background in here just to help throw off caliber and it'll help make him look stand out better. But I'm also going to do this as a line and wash. Now I've used a Winsor Newton colored ink before, but I also use the uh, India ink, which is a very old traditional ink used oftentimes in illustration. But line and wash is a very beautiful form of art as well. And that's what I think I'll do here. And then we'll um, just move forward. So it took me a fair good time working with just a regular number two lead pencil to sketch out Matt and Caliber and get their proportions worked out. So without further ado, let's start right in and get to our um, get into our line work here. Now this comes with this odd cap they give this here, this Higgins ink. This is again India ink. It's permanent ink, and I'm just using a standard quill dip pen, and we will um, print it off here. And I'm going to work 
relatively quickly. Um, to follow basically, I've done most all of my line work here, initial initial work to lay out my drawing and get my proportions worked out as I mentioned and um, put a few little reference marks. Now being left-handed I'm going to work from the right towards the left so that I minimize dragging my hand right through the work I just I just did. Okay I think we're pretty good to go here. All right, I like that. Okay. So wait, now we've inked it all in, and now I'm going to sort of erase the color here. Let me try to help resize things. Um, just to brighten it up, I'll go and erase off my pencil lines. All right, so there's the line and wash version of it. Pardon me, the line version of it. I've got the line work done now. Now to help me a little bit, I really like the um, jumping right into color here and using my watercolor graphite. And even though he's a Palomino, I'm going to establish more of my lights and darks here. I like this. This helps give me another um, area to think about my... Um, lights and darks. And when you're doing paintings like this, especially when you're like this, you've got to get your values correct. You've got to get your relative lights and darks. Um, you can have fun with color, sort of push it. Now I know we've got a Palomino here, so I'm going to kind of get mainly his headstock here. His dark eye. The dark nose. Again, leave a little leave a little patch of white there. So that he looks vital when you're doing these things. That's vital. He looks alive then. Okay, so we're gonna touch him here and there. And you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, it's a Palomino horse. Why are you putting the darks on it? Be the reason is I've got to make the horse even though he's light colored, I've got to make him look three dimensional. And to do that, I've got to have lights and darks, or he will just look flat. And I don't want that because he's an actual animal. So I want to be thinking about where the color goes. I'm going to dab it a few more here. All right, I've got some intermittent lights. I've got... I still like the way the... Um, my darks are coming together here. Okay. All right, so there we've done our sketch, initial pencil sketch. We inked in with India ink. We've now gone through again with watercolor graphite. Um... We've done some negative painting to help um, put caliber and matte into their background so they're, they become part of their background. But um, with the negative painting, we've helped um, uh, establish a difference between our main subject matter, our main point of interest, which is matte and caliber, so that they, not only, the, although they're in the background, you can still differentiate them from the background. So, okay, so now having done, worked with what is basically a black and white painting rate at this point, let's have some fun with color. So while I'm still thinking of where his
where he's, where he's white. Whoops. Whoops. This is raw sienna. Love raw sienna. Sort of a nice, very natural, very old color. Just like the name implies. Siena, Italy. Umbers from the Umber region. Okay, so now, again, I'm thinking ahead where I'm going. My source of light is going to be off the page at 10 o'clock here. And I'm going to have some highlights. I'm going to have some nice blue because we'll have blue and yellow. I love the blue-yellow combination. And I'm going to put some blue highlights here across the area to splash a little bit on uh, matte and, and caliber. So I'm going to block in here where... I'm going to come here... I'm going to do a little bit of white on this, on this leg. I'm going to paint intentionally so into the background some. Okay. And the reason for doing this is to, again to help tie. my um, subject matter, which is matte and caliber, to the background. Because one of the things that you want to do with um, your piece is have it grab your eye from across the room. And one thing you do is you pick an area of dominance and once you have strong colors. Like this, this will help grab grab the viewer's eye. And blue and yellow are a nice strong color combination. Okay, this is again Prussian blue. And now maybe a little bit of calligraphy right at the end. This is a sword dagger brush. Now let me show you the bristles on it. They come at an angle like that. Instead of straight up, they come at an angle. Just cut at an angle. I like this brush. I like it. It gives more of a random, just a little bit of calligraphy here right at the very end. All right, here's our reins coming down. All right, the strings coming off the saddle. All right, a little bit of... Try to come here, get the reins. Now, here in the States, there's a very similar brush. And these, all these bristles are the same length. Um, the... Americans call it a liner brush. The British call it a, a rigger, R-I-G-G-E-R, -G -G -E for the painting the rigging on old sailing ships in days of yore. So it holds a lot of paint, and then you can do all these swirly lines with it. This, too, is an old, old brush. And I like sort of doing all these... I think they kind of got away from me. Again, the paint goes wherever the water goes. So that was wet. And I did that. And, and up here in the tree a little bit, we can have some calligraphy down here in the road. All right, we've got a little, load up our brush here, get it really wet. We can splatter a little bit. It's amazing how some of that has this. It's fun to do. Again, load up some color, whatever color you want. Get it soupy. Get it real soupy and wet. And then just try to be judicious about it. 
a little bit here with this tail. But on the road, that's fine because it's a gravel road. And then if we get anything in here on... I might have a little red there too. Red's my favorite color. And ketchup, the horse I ride, is real red. Okay, there we go. A little bit like that. So a little bit of added eye interest. Like there's brush and that up here on the hillside where he's at. And he's enjoying his ride with Caliber. And here's another thing you can do. You can sort of scrape through like this and either use your fingernail or... got to go through wet paint to do it. So balance it out. Or anything else like the tip of the brush. Carry it through. Carry it down. Okay, watercolor paper like this. This is all 100% cotton rag. Nice high-end paper. This stuff can take a lot of beating. So you can do this fun scraping. Okay. Well, I'll let that dry and tweak it a little bit, but uh, it's looking good to me right now. And we'll put Donald Duck away. And like I said, I'll let it dry, then I'll sign it. And we'll get a hold of Matt and let him know that this is his painting. Hopefully he'll like it. And I'll send a link to him down. He has Mountain Horse Adventures. And if you ever want to take a horseback ride, and if you're in North Idaho, by all means, please get a hold of him. Uh, he does a beautiful horseback rides up on Schweitzer Mountain. And you'll really enjoy the horseback rides. If you, I hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've uh, maybe learned a few things and uh, enjoyed um, watching me make this and understanding some of the techniques that I'm trying to demonstrate here. If you have, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe if you will. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.